nomenclature goes is by try then quanta and so on. So this would just keep going. There would always be Leon added at the end, and there would be by and try and quanta and sext and so on. And you just keep going from there. So we are when we are talking about ten is to power eleven, that fits here. It's lesser than a trillion. So what you do is you pick up billion and see how much more it is. Ten is to power nine is billion. So we have eleven, two more, hundred. So hundred billion. Right. So here we produce ten is to power eleven neutrophils per day. What does that mean? Hundred, hundred billion neutrophils per day. Now, how many neutrophils are present in our blood? So, 2.5. So, of course, various books are going to say it differently, but 2.5 to 7.5 multiplied by 10 is power 9 per liter. Per liter. So, 10 is power 9. If you go here, what does that mean? That is billion. So, 2.5 to 7.5 billions per liter. So, we are billionaires. Per liter, we are billionaires, or really trillionaires, if you actually see all the liters in our body. But anyways, production is 10 raised to power 11, 100 billion per day. But really, if you look at this, we have a lot of cells present in the circulation. This is circulation. Now, pay attention to this. Do not forget this. We have a marginated pool, marginated pool. So, I will explain the idea of the marginated pool in a second. I could also call it reserved pool, reserved pool. What does that mean? These are non circulating neutrophils, which are stored and present in their quarters and they are reservists. They are sitting in reserve. They can be used and called whenever we need them. About 3 to 5 times the neutrophil of the circulation are sitting in the bone marrow and some lymph tissue as marginated pool. So, one interesting thing for us to for, for today's lecture, you can you can equate the neutrophil to a plane, a jet plane, which comes and helps with the defense, right? Neutrophils, you can see they are little jet planes, and this reserve pool could be the jet plane sitting in the hangars. So the bone marrow being our hangars, these little jet planes are there. How much more there? Three to five times are there. So you can do your math. We have 2.5 to 7.5. 10 is power 9, so billions per liter and 3 to 5 times more in the bone marrow. So, the fighter jet planes? The fighter jet planes. So, now how are they going to be called from there? We can artificially call them by injecting, and this is what scientists do, they inject corticosteroids or epinephrine. And as soon as you inject that, and that goes in the blood bone marrow or wherever the marginated pool is sitting. There are three primary areas where the margination occurs. One is in the bone marrow, the second is in the lungs, and the third is in the lymph nodes. Lymph node really small, lung is a bigger deal, and the bone marrow is the biggest deal. So, if you give epinephrine and corticosteroid injection separately, any one of them, that goes and acts on the marginated pool and causes them to be demarginated, separated, and come out in the circulation. So, again, we will talk how do they get marginated? As we pro progress through our lecture and we see chemical um, media, chemical substances on the neutrophil which help it to stay marginated, well, then we will talk about margination and demargination. So, hold on to this thought. We would come back to this margination and demargination. And it is very important. Remember, from a doctor's point of view, we are talking about how the defense mechanism against the infections and injuries are going to work. From a student's point of view, USMLE, a majority of the questions are going to be around the pathology. And within the pathology, a majority of the questions are going to be based on inflammation, healing, tumors, and the immunity. You do not know inflammation, you are not going to understand pathology. 
you don't know pathology, you're 60 to 70 percent of USMLE is at risk. If you're a doctor and you're practicing, you don't know pathology, you already know that it's not a good thing for a doctor not to know pathology. So the basics, the fundamentals of pathology and practice and then passing exams is really here. Inflammation, if out of all the pathology, you want to understand one thing, you say, okay, you know what, I really hate pathology, I'm not going to do it, I just want to do one thing. If you want to do one thing in pathology, no inflammation. Why? Because inflammation is the basis for the whole pathological process, right? That is the groundwork for many of the diseases and many of the repairs. So pathology, understanding pathology is important, oh, sorry, inflammation is important and within inflammation, neutrophils have a greater role. So do not dismiss these things thinking too much inflammation. No, it's going to be what you're going to need as a student and as a doctor. Inflammation, if you do not know inflammation, you are in trouble. So back here, marginated pool reserve about um, three to five times more. Um, all right, so let's continue. The other thing is that the, so this is funny, you know this thing uh, I hope that you know the idea or the concept of bar body, bar body. So the bar body is, remember that females have one extra, they have two X chromosomes, they don't have an extra chromosome, they have two X chromosomes. So one of the X chromosomes is condensed and usually it protrudes on the nucleus or it shows in the nucleus and that is called a bar body. In the neutrophil as well, you can see a bar body. So bar body can be seen on the neutrophil. Again, not on every neutrophil, but some of the neutrophils, I think one in a hundred cells in the, um, in the uh, female cells, you would see that there is a bar body present. The other thing is the uh, dolly bodies. So dolly bodies are cytoplasmic inclusion, cytoplasmic inclusions seen in the neutrophil cytoplasm of course of unknown significance. So I can't say no significance because we don't know what do they do. So unknown significance. So bar body is an extra, the, the X chromosome in the female which has become condensed and shows up in the nucleus. Uh, or protruding from the nucleus called the bar body. This is also called drumstick. So nuclear drumstick or nuclear bar body <coughs> is the condensed X chromosome. If there are more than one, then you know that there is a genetic problem. There are more than one X chromosome. So I hope you know the genetic problems too. And then the Dolly bodies, D-O-H-L-E bodies. So Dolly bodies are the uh, cytoplasmic inclusions of unknown significance, okay. We will continue. So the next thing which we should know, so now uh, we are slowly moving towards trying to understand the neutrophil and its chemical substances and how it would do its function. So one thing on the neutrophil, again three to five lobed nucleus, I keep making three but that, that's not a standard, three to five lobed nucleus. On the surface, the neutrophil has a thing called, I make it like this, called CD31. And the CD here, so remember I told you to keep a piece of uh, paper with you. Uh, CD here, I hope you already know it, cluster of differentiation or cluster of designation, the both are used. So it is just a marker protein or a molecule here. Uh, in case of the neutrophil, the CD31 which are present, they help the neutrophil for its function when it is trying to enter the tissue. We will talk about that in this lecture. The important thing which I want to say here, this is really funny. Keep in mind we talked about natural killer cells and natural killer cells were the pervert who would, who would massage and put their hand on every cell to see how these are doing. 
and remember if they, they tap for the MHC1 and if MHC1 is missing then they kill that cell right or missing or less.